So the other day, I found myself needing a carousel in Angular. So I was like, hey, let me check Angular material. And then they don't have one. So I kept poking around, but all I kept finding were these custom, time-consuming carousels, and I wanted something fast and easy that I could just plug into my application and keep on going because I really don't want to waste a ton of time with UI and stuff of that nature. And then I found it. NGX Slick Carousel. This is the best and easiest to use Angular carousel I could find, and it's responsive and it works like a charm. So let me show you all that you have to do to plug into your app and get it going. Now that we're in Visual Studio Code, first thing I did was just create a blank Angular project called Carousel YT. Uh, it's running right now. Let me just show you again the whole default setup. Haven't added in anything, but now let's go ahead and actually add in our NGX Slick Carousel package uh, and go from there. So I stopped the application. So now let's start installing the things that we need. First thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you have jQuery installed. So that's going to be the first thing. npm install jQuery dash dash save. Once that's finished, the next thing is going to be npm install slick carousel save. And then the final one that you have to install is npm install ngx slick carousel dash dash save. And this is the final one of your installations that you're going to need to do. And once you have that stuff installed, the next stuff that you need to install are going to be in your angular.json. So open up your angular.json and you're going to want to scroll down to your styles. And in your styles, you're going to need to add the styling for the carousel. So you're going to need to add these two packages. So find your styles, comma, and add them in. So it's going to be this node modules, backslash slick carousel, backslash slick, backslash slick uh, scss, and then the same thing but slick theme. And then the next thing that you're going to need to do is go to your scripts, which is right under, and you're going to need to add these two scripts to go for your carousel. It's going to be backslash jQuery dist jQuery min, and then node modules, slick carousel, slick, slick min JS. And that is all that you need to add into here. So now the next part is going to sort of depend on how you're going about doing your components. If you're doing standalone components, well, you can just import it in the standalone component. If you're doing kind of more traditional, then you can just import it into your app module and then go from there. I'm going to do standalone components in mind, but you guys are welcome to do whatever you want. But I'm going to now create a standalone component and then we're going to add in our carousel into that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my app folder right here and I'm just going to generate a standalone carousel component. So now that I've created my carousel component, uh, I'm just going to open up these files here. So as you can see, we have this stuff here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and delete all the default stuff that is in the app component. And I'm going to go ahead and set the routing so that the carousel component is what is hit on default. And to set my carousel page as the default, I'm going to go into my router module and then I'm going to replace this code right here with the path to our carousel component. And then I'm going to set that. And now we're good to go. So the next time that I run this application, it's going to go straight to our carousel component and obviously not the default stuff. So now let's just quickly run our application to make sure that we are hitting the carousel component and that all that is working correctly. So as you guys can see, our carousel component is actually working. It's being hit. So now let's go ahead and add our carousel into our component. Now that we have confirmed that the carousel component works correctly, let's go to the TS file. And again, remember, it is a standalone component. And if you guys want to learn more about that, go click on the card that's somewhere up here uh, where I talk all about standalone components. But moving along, we're now going to import directly into here the carousel module because this is a standalone component and everything gets imported into here. We are going to bring our package in. Cool. Now it's in here. And I have a bunch of pictures of dogs, dogs with hats. So we are going to be pulling these images from my assets. Uh, but again, these images could come from some backend API, some type of service. Uh, I'm just doing this for ease, but you can very easily use this carousel with stuff coming from the backend. Again, in my application, I was able to do that. So I can confirm to you that it will work and it should be fine. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm just going to create this slides uh, little array that we're going to use with our carousel once we create it. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some configurations that the carousel needs uh, and I'll explain them once I move them in. So we basically are creating this little object called slide config. It's going to go in our carousel. You'll see where I plug it in uh, when we do the HTML. 
But basically here we're setting a bunch of different settings and there's even more settings that you can do, uh, including dots, like setting little dots under the carousel, uh, messing around with the arrows on the side. Um, but here basically what you're setting is, these are how many slides I wanna show, how many images I wanna show in the carousel at a time, how much I want it to scroll. So if you have you know, the first four, it'll go to the next four and then the next four and so on. Uh, will it autoplay? Basically means it's gonna go on its own. Here you set the timer in seconds. And if you hover over it, will it pause? Will it, you know, scroll infinitely? You can set that as well. And then this is something that also sets it apart from a lot of the other uh, packages and custom ones that I was seeing is a lot of these other custom ones, it would take a lot of CSS or different rules and structure to be able to make it responsive so that it looks good when you shrink the screen down. This package made it very easy to set these responsiveness rules that at 990, you know, 992, uh, it'll become now three. And then at 768, it becomes one. Or however you wanna handle it, it gives you an ease of use to just quickly set new rules for given sizes. And I found that to be super helpful and really easy. Okay, so now this is all the code that we have in the TS file. So now let's move on to the HTML. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move in the code and then I'll explain what's going on. So basically what we have here is we have a H1 with just the title of the package. Then we have this div, which is basically just a little container since it's just a big empty page. Uh, I just wanted to have something that looks a little bit more compact. Uh, so ignore this inline styling. Don't, don't say nothing in the comment section. I understand I should be using classes, don't worry. It's just a tutorial, it's not a real, <laughs> it's not a real uh, application for a company. Uh, moving down here, we have the ngx slick carousel, the actual tag. So this is the actual carousel right here. These are the configuration settings that are set right here that are these. And then going back here, we have a carousel class and then the definition of what it is. And then now here is the actual individual items that are in the carousel. So a slick carousel item is right here. And this is where we're looping through our list, which is the list up here. Or like I said, could be a list of objects, could be a list of whatever you want coming back from an API. You can do that. And it is very possible. And I've seen it with my own eyes. And then I have my class slide. And then this is where I have my image. Uh, as well as you can set your alt text or whatever you need for accessibility reasons. And this is all the HTML code that you need for your NGX like carousel. Now I'm gonna go and just add in some of the last styles that I need to add for this to look a little bit better uh, and we'll be done and I can demo what we have. So now I'm in my styles.css and there is one rule that is very important that you guys should pay attention here and it is this slick preview before and slick next before. What is important? This is the color for the arrows on the side of the carousel that you can click. By default, they're white. So if they're there and you don't see them, it's probably because you need to change the color of them. So that is one thing that was very key for me that whenever I was first working with this, I was like, where are the arrows? And it's because they were white and they were blending in. So don't forget this one. Uh, and then there's just some extra styling that I'm doing to the individual uh, images right here. That's this image style, but that is it. And that's all the actual code that we need to get this carousel working. So now let me show you guys all of this working. And if you guys are finding this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you drop a like on this video so it can spread to more developers on YouTube. Thank you. So now that we've added in all the code that we need to get the carousel to work, let's check out what we created. So opening it up, we see what we have. We see that H1 tag, the NGX slick carousel, which is this tag up here. And then we have the carousel. So let's go back. As I said, my images were all dogs with hats and that's what we have. So it should go automatically and it's gonna just cycle through the next ones. Uh, again, every five seconds, we only have 10. So that's why you only saw these last two move and it didn't do all four, but you can click ahead. You can click through, you can go forward, you can go backwards. Uh, and if you hold over it, it will also pause it from doing that. Um, other than that, that is what we have here. But now let's actually test that responsiveness that I was talking about. So let's start messing around. So I had set it at 992 to be the first one where it turns into three. So let's start shrinking it down. You're gonna see that it's gonna do its best. And you can set other rules to make it, you know, look a little bit better when it gets to other sizes. But, you know, um, so I think right around here, it becomes three. So now we have three here. It again is able to cycle through three just fine. No issues here. And again, like I said, if you wanted to kind of style this up, make the images slightly smaller so that there's a little bit more, you know, a little margin or padding between them, you can do that. 
Uh, but that's just little tiny stuff that I didn't feel I needed to do. You guys are smart. You guys can do it. Uh, and now let's go to the smallest. So getting down all the way here, as you can see, we're now down to one. So if you were going mobile, if you were doing whatever, you can also do this. And it has all the same rules as the big one had. And then it just kind of, they all start coming back as it starts growing. And you get your four images. You get your one. You get your three. Uh, you get your three. Uh, so again, responsive. Uh, you could add in all the accessibility stuff that you need. And um, it doesn't look bad at all. And you can manipulate any of the styling if you need on the arrows, which again, make sure you color them. Uh, and you can add in dots. You can do a lot of other things that I'm not showing in here because I think this is all you really need to get going. And you can take it from there. And now that you have this Angular carousel, what if you want to show images that are coming from a backend API? Well, how do you connect your Angular application to an API or a .NET API? Well, check out this video if you want to learn how to do that.